if you set the brief for yourself that you're going to make something perfect and profound, it's like you're never going to get started. Mm. So I think it's like it's just all about getting the ball rolling in some way mm-hmm. and if that's like drawing a dick on the paper mm. then it's like yeah it's going to be easier to write on Getting after the balls that rolling. the ball's rolling yes. <laughs> <laughs> i'm john favreau welcome to offline welcome to offline i'm max fisher and my long coup against the host he once knew as john favreau is now complete john how do you feel knowing that as a result of losing the offline challenge you've had to surrender your own show harsh punishment harsh Har- punishment but harsh, i accept it harsh but fair i think i was um i was a little too busy recovering from a condition known as a uh, four days in manhattan <laughs> uh, which is why i wasn't able to take the lead today yeah you've but been i'm here feeling, feeling f- under the weather feeling better i, I uh i contacted vladimir putin and got his dioxin guy <laughs> to try to try to take you down but it turns out drinking 18 cups of coffee a day really builds up your immune system and you, you were able to resist 18 on a on a low day yeah, yeah but i am uh i am filling in for you today and uh john what a guest no we have on the show today uh, Simone Yetch is an inventor and YouTuber. She is known for imaginative creations like musical instrument that plays bubble wrap, a selfie booth for dogs, a drone that gives haircuts, and a Tesla sedan she personally converted into a pickup truck known as Trucla. She describes her aesthetic as the intersection of appealing and appalling, but to me, <laughs> it has always felt like a cross between Tim Burton, Wes Anderson, and the nicest, friendliest Bond villain you've ever met. Simone, welcome to Offline. Thank you. Also, that text message was under NDA, Max. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming out now. Yeah. You didn't say off the record, so it's off all here. <laughs> Um, so Simone, you often make creations that are deliberately not useful in the way that we typically expect modern inventions to be. They don't mm-hmm. clean your floor. They don't manage your finances. I mean, you do make some things that are primarily practical, like um, the coffee table with the sliding top for puzzles. But I'm thinking of things like the piano whose keys play a wall of mechanical teeth, which is my personal favorite, <laughs> or the proud parent machine that charges you a quarter to have a me- mechanical arm pat you on the shoulder. Can you talk about what draws you to this way of thinking about inventing and why you think it resonates so much with your viewers? You know, I think I just unlocked a new bucket list item, which is to have me be one of those uh, TikTok filters where it's like, which Simone Yetch invention are you? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm the thief piano. You know, other than cash and clout, uh, <laughs> it's I, I, I mean, I, I kind of started. So, so my career started um, building shitty robots mm-hmm. and only doing comedy. Like I was, I was building these machines that were mostly meant to be translated into a GIF, and then it kind of evolved from there. And I think, you know, it's it's like I can try to duct tape a more um, profound meaning to it. I think, I mean. That's Bottom line is that I'm just doing it because <laughs> I think it's really fun and it brings me a lot of personal gratification. But I think if, if there's any um, more profound value to it, it's like wanting to communicate seeing your world as malleable and hmm. seeing the little frictions that you have in your life as opportunities rather than as hurdles. So it's like whenever I find mm-hmm. something that bothers me in my everyday life, it's like, oh, what could I build to solve this? And And before in like 2016, 2017, I would have an idea that's like the most ridiculous thing I could think about. It's like, I don't like brushing my teeth. Like I could have a helmet with a robot arm on it that brushes my teeth for me. But now I'm I'm trying to be like still unique, but um, have something that could have a semblance of, of utility. Why do you think it's hard for some people to wrap their head around the idea that there's value in making things that might not be practical or you've called them useless things <laughs> you know honestly i think this is such a fallacy like i mm. i think now i get questioned a lot less because it's like i don't know but especially in the beginning i felt like i had to defend my right to build useless things a lot <laughs> and it's like i don't understand why we question when thing people make things like if you spend a lot of time on making something people are like why did you spend all that time and I'm like, why did you spend all that time on fucking Twitter, John? Like, <laughs> Which is a great question. Yeah. Speaking of useless things. Yeah, it's like I think I think making things, even if it's not something that you have a clear end goal with or that has a, a place in its life or should exist in this world, it's still a better use of your time than like scrolling on your phone. So like 
can can we stop shitting on people making things even if we don't see the point of them? Yeah. Well, I feel like the you really put your finger on it with a, like you had to defend your right to make things that way because our culture has like such a preoccupation with invention as this like narrow capitalist like we have to make mm-hmm. things to make money or to like take the startup public or to pursue some like very practical purpose. Like why do you think it's so hard in our culture now to just want to make things for the sake of the fun of it. And that is why I'm running for president in 2024. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I think a part of it is also just the idea of engineering being this thing that you do for work and for utility mm. and making things. I think it's like if, if it's like arts and crafts, people give you a taller ceiling or whatever the expression is. Yeah. And they're like, okay, you're just doing that for, for the hell of it and because you enjoy it. But especially when you're starting to involve components of engineering, people are like, no, that's what we do for work. Right. And work needs to be purposeful. And then I've kind of like managed to shoehorn myself into like some sort of entertainment category. So I, I <laughs> give myself some slack there because I'm like, no, it's for the children. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter. Also, kids don't watch my videos because I curse too much. But... It's, well, they're very funny. There is something kind of like, um, I, I mean, this is a compliment, like something childlike about it, because it's I feel like I remember when I was a kid, I used to love playing with Legos mm-hmm. or like playing with Lincoln Logs. And there's something so fun about just creative just for like you just build something up and then it's just because it was fun to make and then knock it down. But we really don't give ourselves permission to do that as adults. Yeah, I think I think. Something that is so good about child play and that I want to retain into adulthood is like kind of the frolicking nature of it. Like I feel mm. like kids, they're just like they're just fucking around, you know, and there's there's no like a clear end goal. You don't need to justify it. Nobody's going to be like, why did you make that Lego car? Yeah, because the the purpose is the the build itself. Um, and I think that I, I think I've, I've really had to fight to keep that space for me because it's mm-hmm. also like the typical story of like you do things for yourself and because you enjoy it and then suddenly a lot of people start watching you do that thing and then you don't have as much time and I'm really like trying to make sure that I have downtime to just sit and mm-hmm. like play around and and do things um, because I do think that there's a lot of value in it. I loved um, Legos as a kid but I was one of those kids especially as I got a little older who every time I bought a Lego set I would like follow the instructions on how to build oh, sure. what was on the front of the yeah. Lego set, like just exactly like I had to do it. Yeah. And now that I have a child and he's starting, he's almost three and he's starting to play with stuff. I'm purposely trying to avoid having mm. like, you know, like he's just now building whatever he wants. Yeah. And I'm like now trying to do the same thing with him. Cause I was like, I don't want him to be <laughs> like I was and just like follow all yeah. the instructions because it does, I think sort of sap your creativity to just like have to follow the instructions the whole yeah. time. I mean, I think that there are other values to following mm-hmm. instructions because it's like helping your three-dimensional thinking and reading things really clearly or following. Yeah. I mean, there's there's learnings in there too, but I think the kind of off-road you threw the IKEA manual out the window oh. type of building is really good. Yeah. John, well. what do you make when it's just when you're just following your imagination? With Charlie. Me now? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just, I, I don't even, nothing specific because I'm not that. Impress artist. us. I'm, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John, do you have any builds in the studio yeah. today? <laughs> it's very bad at that. Justify the time you spend on that Lego set with your child. Honestly, I, <laughs> I was home the other day and it was during the offline challenge, so mm-hmm. I didn't have my phone. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to play with Play Doh. And I spent two and a half hours with Charlie. Mm. Plant, like just building a giant ball of play-doh with like every oh, color wow. imaginable yeah. for and i was just like it was a weird experience because i'm like i don't even know what i'm doing it was like it was flow we've talked about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I, it was like i don't even know what i'm doing right now i'm just like building random shit i haven't done this since i was 10 years old but you're you th- present do you think we've sort of lost as a culture that this drive for fun and playfulness or did we ever have it i think i think w- something that we've um definitely not learned and that I wish that we learned because I want to know how to do it is like using enthusiasm as fuel rather than duty. Like Mm -hmm. what we learned so much in school and in the workplace is like how to be disciplined and how to sit through boring things. 
And as, as somebody who's like in a, in a choose your own adventure type of work environment, I'm like, I just want to be excited and I want to harness that as the, as the yeah. fuel that propels me forward. But it's hard to retain excitement over a long time, especially as pressure. I mean, it's like the psychology experiment of as soon as people get paid to do something, they don't like doing it anymore. Right. <laughs> um, so I think for, for me, a, a lot of the thinking I have around that is like, yeah, how do you create a work environment where you're kind of it's force free, but there also are force elements, but you still are right. pumped about being there. Well, how did you get there? Because you I mean, you made the point that initially a lot of your builds were about in a sense about the final product, like getting the GIF, getting the kind of like punchline. But now your videos are so much about the process of you kind of exploring your way through the build and being creative on camera. I think, I mean, there's a lot of different things that happened there. Um, but yeah, the initial projects that I did, they were very much, yeah, GIF forward and kind of a punchline. Mm -hmm. And the whole video that I used to shoot was about me playing around with this machine that I had built. Mm. But then I started ha building things that, you, you know, I can't have a 15 minute video of me playing with a puzzle table, that, that <laughs> like a mechanical table that switches between two tabletops. So right. it's like, I need to justify the video space of mm. it. And that was kind of forced me to start documenting the build more. Um, so yeah, I think, I think the way that I'm thinking about it is what do I want to do? And then how do I justify that in the work context that I'm in now. That's so funny. So even as you are um, producing this wonderful experience of play and creativity for its own sake, it's still a little bit guided by the of form course. and the structure. It's like, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I'm not... This is a job. As I mean, much I as I love doing all... it, it's like yeah. it's still a job and there are always compromises you have to make. The compromise I have to make is like put your logo here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm a human billboard and the way that I can justify spending this yeah. amount of time on a project like two months on a table is because I have a sponsor. So it's right. like there's always going to be compromises. I think that the ones I have are pretty minimal. Speaking of... We sell underwear to talk about politics. That's, right. <laughs> yeah. that's, what, we, that's what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously we really look down. On, <laughs> yeah. on Speaking of your forehead as a billboard, <laughs> you brought a hat to the studio today. I Can thought you... that was going to be a brain tumor segue for a second. <laughs> This this uh, this sense uh, this uh, segment sponsored by Brian the brain tumor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, we don't we don't take brain tumor money here. On, no. We have we do have a line somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I was ready to pay you twenty dollars. <laughs> let me tell you my sob story about how I got a brain tumor. Uh, but no, let's talk about my train hat. I think this honestly it might be its premiere. On really? the wow. internet. Yeah. Oh, oh this is so exciting. Flattered. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you guys are very honored by that. I yes. am. Extremely. Yes. Yeah. 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 Extremely. <laughs> okay. So it's a little bit beat up because it just came back from me to Jordan. But I, I wanted to make wow. a hat that has a train track around it so I can have a model <laughs> train that goes around my head. I'm going to have to take off my headphones for this. Also, I hope that it still has batteries. So this for so people cool. who are are listening on the podcast, it's a big green felt, I think a bowler hat, and it has not just a little model train track around the brim with a little tiny train on it, but some really beautiful like trees. And I think I see some sheep on there. There are it's, sheep. It's there a, are flowers. <laughs> there are trees. I should have brought Charlie into work today because he would be obsessed yeah, with this. He is yeah. big into trains right now. Just wait until I sell this to Charlie for two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so. I'm not selling it. Yeah. So this kind of just started as an idea of of you know it, it a lot of um, my projects are just scratching visual itches of just being like, oh, what would that look like? So, <laughs> so cool. putting it on here and then turning on the wow, train and that. it goes around. Oh my God, it's running around the brim. It's perfection for those of you who are just listening. It's well, incredible. It is, uh... How do you get the train to stay on there? Uh, that was a big challenge. I spent way too much time doing this. And this is also the time where I'm like, I am so grateful that I can spend the amount cool of time job. figuring out how to get a train to stay on its track. Because they're really, I remember going to the model train store. I think there's one in like Pasadena. And they were like, oh, that's never going to work. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to get the train to stay on the track. And I was like, 
challenge accepted. Watch me. <laughs> yeah, watch me. <laughs> fucking watch me. And I was like, they do not know who they're dealing with here. Should we, should we send a picture to them? So it say, in your face, Pasadena train, <laughs> train <laughs> hobbyist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did no, they know who you are? Uh, no. Okay. And I, I, but honestly, I don't bit. know, even if they knew who I was, I don't know if they would have had more faith in my capacity to pull this off. But the thing I ended up doing is I stitched in this um, piece of wire in the middle of the track. So, and then I glued oh, in yeah, all these magnets under the train. So that oh, kind of magnets. helps it. It doesn't, oh, wow. it doesn't help it hold it perfectly. Like I can't wear it and shake my head and stuff. I could probably not walk around with it, but it's definitely um, good enough for the vine. I love it. What was the impetus for it? What does impetus mean, Max? <laughs> <laughs> EFL over a, here. English is fun, not my first language. A fun language. fact about Simone is that not only is English your second language, but you have only been living in an English-speaking country for, what, like five years? I think it's six or seven Wow. Now. Yeah, but, yeah. I know that. Uh, impetus. Does that mean? What, what, why? The, why? The, the, like the uh, genesis of the idea. Genesis? What does genesis <laughs> mean, Max? <laughs> okay, that's in the Bible. What Everybody led, knows. What it. led you to start yeah. that? What led <laughs> you well, to start that? Well, I'm an Thank unbaptized <laughs> bastard um, who has a very different definition of what it means to get on my knees. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> appealing and appalling, folks. Appealing and appalling. <laughs> Crude and wholesome. <laughs> oh, that was my first audience testing. I wrote that joke in a script, and I'm. Uh, it made you laugh. It's so good. yeah, I, I think we'll pass past quality yeah. control. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the origin. I mean, yeah, I was just uh, wondering what it would look like, and thinking that it would be funny. You know, I, I, I think. Um, I've, I've been kind of thinking about how my brain works, and I think a lot of my mm. humor is also with similes. So it's like kind oh, of yeah. comparing two different objects that don't really have something to do with each other. And right. I think that's a lot of the stuff I build as well. It's like the recent, most recent project that I did and that I'm in the edit of now is uh, a flower vase that's also a lamp. So I call it a flamp. Uh, <laughs> and, and it's mostly just like, oh, but what if it's a vase, but it's also a lamp? Yeah. And the flowers yeah. kind of become like the bouquet becomes the lampshade. Right. So a lot of it is just like a kind of toy car crashing two objects together and being like, what would that look like? I do love the like sense of humor you bring to your invention. So I have a question about the proud parrot machine. And this <laughs> might be me projecting some like English major bullshit onto it. But I really read it as this kind of like, commentary on the role of technology in our lives and then we mm -hmm. like look to these devices and products to fulfill all our needs but of course like the our most basic needs like a parent's approval we will never get from a gadget is that just yeah i i think uh we can, we can definitely really put you on the couch here <laughs> yeah uh if I you want to get if a I ever have like <laughs> if i ever have an art exhibit can you write the little Absolutely. descriptions of it like That's the right. lofty yes, explanation of yeah. it i think i think mostly the the thing that really hammers in the joke or hum the joke for me on that one is that it charges you 25 cents for that it is, so yes, i think so it's funny. like rather than being a machine it's like yes you can have parental approval but we're going to bring capitalism into it That's it's good. like parental yeah. approval on an app like a See? subscription model yeah. <laughs> yeah. i can completely make it up i do feel like there is a like I only don't know. dads <laughs> only dads <laughs> That is so good. Wow. That's a, put, put it in the store. <laughs> I like it. Crooked.com slash only dads. <laughs> um, you've, you've talked about um, that your advice to friends is to um, lower the bar for what they're trying to make. Um, and I started thinking about this because uh, in another life, I was a writer. Uh, I have pretty much stopped writing, um, partly because... I always feel like there is this pressure every time I look at a blank page to like write something great and you write something and then people like it and you're like, I have to do better next time. Um, why do you think we struggle so much with just letting ourselves just create, do the easy stuff? And, and mm. how, how are you finally able to like lower the bar <laughs> for yourself as you just start creating things? Years of practice. Um, I mean, on a, I think it's just, you know, if you, if you set the brief, for yourself that you're going to make something perfect and profound. It's like you're never going to get started. Mm. So I think it's like it's just all about getting the 
ball rolling in some way. Mm-hmm. And if that's like drawing a dick on the paper, mm. then it's like, yeah, it's going to be easier to write on Getting after the balls that. Rolling. The balls rolling, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, I'm just thinking of because because I'm 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 definitely a recovering perfectionist, yeah. and I used to be so scared of even trying to do something because I'm like I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it well enough. And just starting small and kind of getting excited about something, I think is is the way to go. So it's like. I mean, for, for writing, if that's like, I mean, let's just write one sentence. But no, maybe yeah. that's too high of a bar as well. You're like, okay, let's rewrite this menu for Papa John's and like try to punch <laughs> it up. I don't know. like. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's about like getting stuff on the page and being like, uh, you know what? That's not great, but it's okay. And I, I think got that's, it out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, like, especially if I'm, if I'm writing scripts or having to do voiceovers or something, then it's like, I'll ask somebody else to write a draft for Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. because then I also know that I'll be like oh my god this draft is so bad (laughs) I need to go in and make it better yeah editing is it becomes a lot easier (laughs) yeah and it's it's, so I think it's like how can you create that artificial situation for yourself in some way so like maybe that's even like having chat gbt write a draft oh there we go and then be like okay very offline this I yeah (laughs) well we had on the author uh Catherine Price last week and she talked about a definition of fun that she uses which is playfulness plus flow or being present plus connection and I feel like that last one is easy to forget about and miss out on and you actually have that a lot in your videos where you'll bring in other people to like work on a little component of a project that you're working on. Was that, I mean, I know probably to some extent that just to like bring some variety into the video, but I would imagine that that helps a lot in keeping it fun. Yeah, I can, I can only beat my own face so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I mean, I, I, I'm also I'm a bit of a lone wolf creator, mm. but I noticed that I, you know, n- few moments in the career feel as good as you expect them to. And I noticed yeah. that the ones that mm. feel the best is when you're working towards a common goal with other people. And Absolutely. it's so much easier to feel pride for a group of people than yeah. for yourself. It's really true. So I, I think wanting to recreate that. And I think that's also like mm-hmm. something that I'm what I'm doing now is like I feel like I have no excuses to not have a great life because I'm so much at the helm of my own work destiny. Right. Um, and I'm I'm very privileged in that sense that I'm like, okay, anything I'm interested in, I can kind of go for. So I'm trying to really see like what are the values that don't just look good on paper but that feel really good. Mm. And having community and creativity feels like one of those. And then it's like, how do you how do you, how do you build that? So I'm I'm trying to I mean I'm I'm working on some bigger projects now and where it's like I have to work in a team because the YouTube thing it's like I I got it down it, sure. it's fine, um but yeah just trying to figure out how to create that work environment that just feels as good as it looks. Offline is brought to you by Doers Performance Denim. These are incredibly comfortable jeans, stylish, breathable, lightweight, durable, and made sustainably too. I just got some Dewar jeans. I need some new jeans. These are great. They came to the house last week. I've been wearing them. They are fantastic. They're comfortable, which is important with jeans. Yeah, jeans aren't always comfortable. It's, well, especially like where you, you wear into the office. We're sitting in our chair all day. Like you want to wear some comfortable pants and you don't want to be wearing sweatpants every day. Like love it. No. Or, you know, and jeans can be hit or miss. You know, you your classics, which sounds like what you're describing here. <laughs> We've had some friends who used to wear those horrendous. Like it looked like he'd fallen into uh, bleach and then gotten sandpapered absolutely awful large pockets holes you don't want either of those things that doer doesn't have either they they have five times the stretch of traditional rigid denim designed to keep us cool and dry as the temperature changes and is antibacterial so it's easy to care for and requires less washing they're committed to sustainability at doer they focus on plant-based and recycled fibers and design their product to look and feel great for years trust me Doer's Performance Denim is a purchase you can feel good about. Check out Doer's flagship stores in L.A. and Denver or shop online at shopdoer.com. Offline listeners will get 15% off site-wide using my special promo code OFFLINE. For 15% off your entire order, go to shopdoer.com and use the special promo code OFFLINE, shopdoer.com, promo code OFFLINE. 
Offline is brought to you by Simply Safe. If you've listened to the show before, you've probably heard me talk about Simply Safe. You know they were named Best Home Security of 2023 by U.S. News and World Report, so they're probably resting on their laurels, right? No, that's not that's not Simply Safe. Never. They're always innovating, always working on the next thing to help keep you and your loved ones safe 24 7, like their new 2 in 1 smoke and CO detector. It's next generation hazard detection that distinguishes between fire and cooking smoke, so your home is protected and you get fewer false alarms. I hate those false alarms. Hate them. You try to make something, you try to cook in something. I mean, I, I don't, I don't cook, but some people are trying to cook something, and then there's a bunch of smoke, and then the, and you're opening all the doors and you're waving the towel, yeah. you know? The baby's crying, the baby, dog yeah. is barking, the fire department shows up. No one wants like an that. Asshole. No one wants that. So their new smoke and CO detector joins Simply Safe's comprehensive suite of advanced security camera sensors and hazard detectors for seamless whole home monitoring. With Simply Safe's 24/7 professional monitoring service, trained agents stand ready to respond in an emergency, dispatching police, firefighters, or EMTs to your door, even if you're away or can't be reached. Monitoring service costs under a dollar a day. Simply Safe's easy to set up for yourself. Love it, set it up himself. Mm-hmm. He's been protected with Simply Safe for a long time. In fact, he's not here right now because I think he is stuck inside his house. He can't get out because he's being so well protected by Simply Safe. Yeah, he just feels like he's uh, wrapped in comfort, mm-hmm. is what he said. Uh, right now, get 20% off your new system when you sign up for interactive monitoring. Visit simplysafe.com slash offline. That's simplysafe.com slash offline. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Offline is brought to you by Fume. Cold turkey may be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your habits. Instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Fume uses all-natural, delicious, flavored air with no harmful chemicals. Fume is a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. Tommy, are you looking for something for your fingers to do? I, I, I Honestly, yes, because I bite my nails and it's disgusting. I bet Donald Trump is hitting the fume so hard right now. Hitting it hard. Because that guy's got to be stressed. He's got to be fidgety and twitchy. He needs something to do besides make weird videos for True Social. You might be wondering, what is a fume? It's a You're little right. wooden stick. And you can, uh, you can breathe through it. And uh, there's a little flavor there. Uh, and it's it smells good, and uh, it helps you out. Made of real wood. Helps you out with your habits. Gives you something to do with your hands, because we all know, listen, it's it's not unlike things you talk about on this show, where you just like reach for your phone without even thinking about it. So you know what? Now you can reach for your fume instead, instead of, of your, your phone. phone. That's actually a good idea. Wow. Sitting right there. Stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 100,000 customers and has thousands of success stories, and there's no reason that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com and use code CROOKED to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use code CROOKED to save an additional 10% off your order today. I think that point about um, working together with other people mm-hmm. on a common task for fun is a really important one. There's actually this theory I think about a lot that says that one of the reasons that we're getting lonelier is that we've lost what they sometimes call, sociologists call, forward-facing activities. Mm-hmm. which is like a shared task like a recreational sports league or like bowling is the classic example where we don't have these activities where we all come together and do something for fun towards a common, which of course, when you're a kid, that's what play is, right? Is you're building the Lego set together. And then one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about, partly with your videos and also just partly like, as John and I have been talking about, like reconnecting with what's meaningful in life because we're, you know, have three hours a day back that we, you know, took back from our smartphones is finding a way back to that kind of like common activity with friends where you're working towards some common task because with them. it's also the way that we hang out and and which is great but mm-hmm. to an extent is like meeting up for lunch and being like tell me what's up with you yeah and yeah. i i remember going to this um this youtuber who karen puzzles she just makes puzzle videos like jigsaw puzzle videos and she was having a launch party well if she has for to because her name is puzzles. karen puzzles so i know i know, could I know. She do that? yeah uh, no, it's, I mean, it's, I'm Simone Inventor. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I was like, well, that was chosen for me. Um, and she was having a launch party for this puzzle. And it was like maybe 10 people. And she brought in a bunch of puzzles, 10 people in a bar just sitting working on a jigsaw puzzle. And yeah. it was so lovely in the sense that it took all pressure off of have, keeping a conversation. Yeah. It made mm-hmm. it so not awkward to remain silent. I mean, I also like 
broke up with somebody or we were breaking up if we were working on a Lego set during like the breakup conversation, which also like in retrospect huh. ended up being a really nice way because it added this natural breaking point of the conversation. Like There's it gave a us space. a choice to yeah. enter the conversation in and out. And and I, I think that like it's so hard to like be like, we're going to hang out or we're going to keep a conversation. Like right. I just want to be side by side with yeah. somebody. That is really smart. Although now if my girlfriend ever breaks out a Lego set, I'm going to know something, <laughs> something terrible this is, is it. coming. Yeah. Uh, John, I like you have been thinking a lot about how to make writing fun again. And I actually a couple years ago stumbled into finding a way to do it as a like forward facing group activity and like is coming that a Google up Doc? In like a bit, I, kind of, yeah. So it's um, revolutionary technology. <laughs> called. I invented something called Google Docs <laughs> two years ago. I found this you neat guys little boutique website. Love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Google.com. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a, during lockdown and the pandemic, some friends of mine started as a like group activity, as an excuse for us to stay in touch. This board game that we would all play, where it was like you do one move every day, which takes five minutes, but it's an excuse for us to all be like texting each other oh. all day and it was great because it's like forward-facing activity that you can do when you're not together and the game takes like two or three months because it's just one move a day and at the end of it as a like group activity because there's a bunch of reporters we collectively wrote an oral history of the game we had just played which was a ridiculous way nerds. to spend our oh huge <laughs> not only nerds but it actually later it got written up by vice because that's what happens when you do something as a reporter and the headline was, I thought, so funny. The impossibly nerdy online game that's fixing the brains of media Twitter, which they wow. really wow. they really got our asses wow. with that one. <laughs> um, but it was really fun because you're writing just for the enjoyment of you and your friends. You're doing it together. You're kind of playing around with each other's drafts. And I feel like actually sometimes we get that on the shows a little bit where you're writing together. Yeah. So I, I'm really going to try to find more ways to take that creative outlet that John, like you, I used to enjoy a lot and try to do it like with friends because I think it really works. Yeah. We need a catchier name for this than uh, forward facing activities, though. I know. It's not. <laughs> but wait, so forward facing, is that that we're not face to face? Yeah, the idea is that, like you were saying, you're it's like a contract of like the contrast is instead of like you go to a cafe and you're like facing someone that you get like, you know, if you go on a bike ride with a friend, you're both facing together. Yeah. It's actually. Um, we joke a lot on this podcast about how men need therapy. I mean, everybody jokes about that because it's, you know, a thing That's, that is true. Yeah. But they something that they often say that men have an easier time bonding with forward-facing activities because it takes a lot of the pressure off mm. on the relationship. And it's true. And that's why there's a lot of like cycling leagues or like I don't golf personally, but yeah, I think it works or, for or why you pee side by side. <laughs> that is a big one. Yeah. A lot of con lot of deep conversations yeah. happen while peeing side that's by side. That's actually most editorial meetings <laughs> yeah. take place. That's and... mostly why I've stopped looking at my phone at the urinal <laughs> so I could start. Also deeply sexist people. because you're excluding all the women <laughs> or, or dickless population. Um, so Simone, you have also made inventions that are about working through um, tougher feelings. Can you talk about um, some of the stuff you made when you were going through your treatment for your brain tumor and what and it was like tumor? to yeah, work through that by making things and inventing? Honestly, I think this is a great exhibit, like exhibit A of that I make my best work when I'm happy <laughs> because looking back at the things that I made when I was profoundly sad and it's yeah. just bad <laughs> you know and I feel like there's this this idea that art comes from like a deeply depressed place and mm -hmm. it's like and for me it's like no it comes from feeling really good and being mm -hmm. excited and and yeah and when I'm sad the the stuff that comes out is kind of poop. I made a, I, so I, I went through, I had a brain tumor, I went through mm. surgery, and then I went through radiation treatment for it. I'm doing good. Thank you for your concern. That's great. Um, That's great. And, and when you go through radiation treatment, you get this like weird mesh mask that's molded after your face because they need to keep your face in a super still position and make sure that they get the same spot every time. And I turned it into a terrible lamp. I don't know why you're so down on. I really like the stuff that you made. 
Oh, thank you. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to have thank it, hang you. it on your wall. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I offer you, when is your birthday, Max? <laughs> it's November, and boy, can I not wait. <laughs> Radiation mask layout. <laughs> <laughs> but I really am surprised to hear that you, I mean, do you think that, I mean, I imagine it's probably tinged because you were going through a terrible experience when you made it. I don't, I mean, it's not that, it's not that I look back at it and I'm like, oh, I don't want to think about that time in my life. Mm -hmm. It's more just like, oh man, that was, that was bad. Um, It just wasn't very pretty or appealing or something that I want to have around me. But then I do, I mean, I I guess I, I can't, I think that the things that I wrote during that time still hold up. The videos that I made, I'm, I'm like weirdly proud of like sometimes when I when I think about that time I'll like go back and watch my old videos from there because mm-hmm. it's such a like little time capsule yeah. and I'll and I'll cry with my past self um so yeah but the the things that I built I can't think of anything other than the radiation mask didn't d- don't feel definitely don't feel like my best work but did yeah. it make you feel better when you were making it at least yeah I think so mm. Because it, it, I do, I do remember that making videos about it made me feel a lot better. And I know that that sounds incredibly millennial. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna exploit this on Twitter. Uh, but it, it was, it wasn't so much that. It was just like every when, when, when something big happens to you like that, people react in different ways, and mm-hmm. you feel in control in different ways. For some people, that's like gatekeeping the information, and that's what I call the dad strategy. It's like, I'm not going to talk to anybody about that, and they're not going to know until it's stage four. Dad's yeah. famously uh, doing great emotionally. Yeah. Too, right? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Only dads. <laughs> you offer. Well, there it is. Yeah. Um, but for me, the way that I processed this was like, I, I wanted to scream it from the top of a mountain, and I remember being mm. like, I need to stop telling Lyft drivers that I have a brain tumor, because they were like, hey, what's going on? How are you doing today? And I'm like, well, I have a brain tumor. And I'm like, I need, I need to stop doing that to people because it's putting them in an incredibly awkward spot. So so for me, it was like the, the telling the story of what was happening was a way to feel like I was getting some value out of it. I was able mm-hmm. to provide some value to other people and also just very cathartic. So, yeah, I think maybe that is the one thing I did create and that I'm proud of. So the you got healthy and then the pandemic started. So mm-hmm. that's fun. Um, and and you have said that the sort of the limitations around the pandemic sort of led you to change the kind of work that you did. Um, you created an online store. Um, can you talk a little bit about that transition and why the pandemic sort of led you that? I think it's also, I mean, I, I part of this is just me being a chronic upside seeker. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, okay. I got a brain tumor, but at least I can make content about it or like the pandemics happen. Well, I guess that means I can spend a lot of more time in my workshop and I can really work on my skills. So it's like (laughs) it's more just being like, oh, this is the dish we were handed. And what what can we actually make turn this into? Mm. Um, But I think it was. Yeah, I think it was off of the brain tumor. I, it changed the kind of projects that I wanted to build because I wasn't feeling as silly anymore. I feel like I definitely got a lot older during that time Mm. and a lot of the stuff that I did before and when I was a bit younger it's so much about like oh my god look at me I'm so silly I'm gonna get things flying in my face and I didn't really feel like doing that anymore Mm. because also my skull doesn't have the structural integrity that it used to (laughs) Um, so and and also just being like I just want to spend time actually learning how to build things because I'd rushed through every project because I was on a deadline to make a video and I was always just putting it together it really slopped for camera and I'm like no I actually have the time now because I'm not traveling and speaking at conferences to do things properly and out of that also the uh, product business started because Mm. you're like oh these things are actually really nice and it started with the everyday calendar that we launched on Kickstarter which I made because I wanted to meditate every day yeah how does so how does that connect to the meditation because I've seen the calendar and I was like I think I could use that but how Mm -hmm. does where does the meditation come into play the meditation comes into play. So basically, it's this electronic calendar that you can hang on your wall and that has a grid of 365 days. Mm. And every time you do the thing that you want to do, mm. maybe use your phone not that ah, much. You get to tap that day to light it up. And it's basically just this like way to make your streak a little bit more sacred mm. and have it very uh, visual on your wall. 
So yeah, I made it because I wanted to meditate every day and I would make these grids in my notebooks and check little boxes and you're like, what's a prettier, more sacred oh, yeah. version of this? Oh, I should get one of these for uh, Charlie using the potty. <laughs> yeah. We're basically doing that with like stickers right now, but the calendar looks is beautiful. People use it, yeah, to to keep train their kids to brush their teeth and everything. And there's actually a surprising amount of parents using it. Max mentioned um, the uh, dog selfie booth. That's no. not in the store. <laughs> not in the Why store. not? Because I would definitely Some buy of the that. Best stuff. It's talking about gatekeeping. Yeah, a dog um, selfie booth sounds. You amazing. know, the world just isn't ready for it. <laughs> yeah, I, tra- I trained my dog to. I, I built this little little booth, like a photo booth for dogs out of Lego, and I trained my dog to hit a pedal with her button, and it dispensed a treat and took a photo. That's so, so cool. a way for my dog to take selfies, which was very cute. I love that. What's I the know. thing you get asked most about? Like people say they want to buy that because for me it would be the chair that your pet can sit on. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, Truckla. Yeah, Definitely. I would imagine that is a, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Tesla that I converted into a pickup truck, a lot of people want to buy. Um, but what's, the, it, what's the best offer you've gotten on it? Mm, no serious offers at all, but I'm we're actually considering selling her. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. You heard it here first. Mm-hmm. What's your, what's, what are you looking to get? What's the floor? I don't know. Where should we start the bidding? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tricky. It's, um, yeah, but it's like, I'm not, I'm not driving her anymore because i got a volvo but also it's like she's such a spectacle and i just can't take mm-hmm. it and i don't want her to just sit in a garage and then it's like i might as well sell her i don't want to yeah gatekeep truck club this episode of offline is brought to you by carrie yuma the cool sustainable sneaker company with old school style and new school ethics summer's in full swing and we're all in search of the perfect shoe to carry us through the season of all things fun and sun with over 40,000 five-star reviews, Carrium has got you covered with shoes that have a classic look or crazy comfy and consciously crafted for your ultimate daily summer shoe. Worn by celebrities and praised by publications like Vogue and GQ, these kicks are a cult fave and they're loved by us. We've loved the lace-up Aka for years and now Carrium recently launched Canvas Slip-Ons, 100% vegan, which is what you're looking for in your slip-ons, Damn right. and made with organic cotton and a natural rubber outsole. This easy-to-wear style provides a timeless look with incredible comfort and ease. It's everything you love about the Aka, now without the laces. I'm looking for some new Cariumism in the market. I bought some, and I accidentally shipped them to my mother's house instead of to mine, so she's going to bring them when she visits, but I'm excited to wear them. That is, ex- that is exciting. How about that story? Uh, so, I mean, I hope she got some for herself, it's too. Yeah, saying, well, hope, now I owe her a pair. I hope Louise has like, some, too. Uh, I ship something to her house, it shows up, she's like, oh, a present. It's like, nope. Not for a you. Selfish-ass son. Please Just put those on the plane. Yeah. Uh, Carium is always keeping it fresh with epic collaborations with brands like the Peanuts, and Deus, there's something to love for everyone and sure to be shoes that will make a statement. Check out their summer shades made in collaboration with Pantone. Three new sneakers bursting with life for a season packed with fun and bursting. full of flavor. So tasty. Tasty shoes. not And they're vegan. So tasty vegan shoes. And for a limited time, offline listeners can get an exclusive 15% off your pair of Cariuma sneakers. Go to C-A-R-I-U-M-A dot com slash offline to get 15% off. That's C-A-R-I-U-M-A dot com slash offline for 15% off only for a limited time. Offline is brought to you by OneBladeShave.com. Do you hate shaving? Of course you do. Uh, the, yes. We used to hate shaving too. Razor burn, irritation, ingrown hairs. The worst. Until started using one blade razors it's the world's most intuitive single edge razor and it's guaranteed to eliminate your shaving related skin issues they got the core razor the hybrid razor the genesis razor i've used the core it's great it's one blade it lasts it doesn't cut you it makes shaving easy big razor companies they've been lying to us for decades lying they say that more blades equals better shaves it's not true not it's true. not true tommy you know who called those... this one nas one mic <laughs> one blade Wow. To rule them all? That's okay. We're going. You don't like Nas? I'm sorry. I do like Nas. I just didn't expect a Nas reference for like Illmatic? For for one blade. All those blades are tearing up your skin. One blade state of the art award winning razor design makes single edge shaving completely natural and effortless. One blade razors have a patented pivoting head that hugs the skin, ensuring the blade is always at the right angle all by itself. So upgrade your shave, save your skin, save the planet one blade at a time. Head over to onebladeshave.com slash offline today. And use code offline to get 10% off your first order. All one blade razors are guaranteed for life, whether it's the intro level core razor or the premium Genesis. And all orders have a 60 day return policy, so there's no risk in trying a one blade razor today. Do it for Nas. Do it for Nas and do it for Baby Grunk. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Livy. 
<laughs> to upgrade your shave and to start shaving responsibly, get 10% off your One Blade order today at onebladeshave.com slash offline. That's one spelled out O-N-E bladeshave.com slash offline to get 10% off your first order with code offline. Offline is brought to you by Smile Actives. Have you ever wished that you had a whiter and brighter smile? Well, before you visit a dentist, you should know that their whitening treatments can be very expensive and it's not just the price. You also have to book the appointment and schedule time away from work or family to sit in a dentist's office chair while undergoing the procedure. While they torture you. While they torture it's you. so painful. I was at the dentist the other day. Ugh, I don't want to go back. And it was, uh, it was actually an easy one. It was an easy one. But if I had my teeth whitened there, I'd be there forever and my teeth would hurt. It would hurt like days later. Fortunately, now you can try Smile Actives at home or anywhere, anytime. Smile Actives offers a safe and affordable alternative to those expensive whitening procedures. Simply add Smile Actives Pro Whitening Gel to your regular toothpaste. And then you just brush. That's it. You squirt it on your toothbrush along with your toothpaste. You brush, and then you don't think about it again. I do it twice a day, and it works. Bada bing, bada brush. 97% of Smile Actives users in a clinical trial reported up to six shades whiter on average, all within 30 days. Visit smileactives.com slash offline today to receive our special buy one, get one free offer with auto delivery and free shipping and handling. That's smileactives.com slash offline. Terms and conditions apply. See site for details. So we have been doing over the last five or six weeks the offline challenge mm-hmm. where, yeah, I told you about it a little bit, where we are breaking our addiction to our smartphones and to social media by every week. We had um, some set of restrictions we would impose on ourselves to try to reset our relationship to our phone. And famously, I just knocked it out of the park and just killed John three to one, was not even close. It's like one by four minutes. Twice. Two weeks in a row. Wow. I know. Really. Uh, Do you, I mean, I know we're going to talk about uh, some of your ideas that you have, which I love for breaking up with your smartphone. (laughs) Do you struggle with smartphone addiction at all? Played like a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I, I, I have a terrible relationship to my phone. Mm. I don't like it. It's such a pacifier. When do you find yourself going for it? Uh, when I'm lonely and, yeah, you know, yeah. and also like when there's something I don't want to do, you know, I'm, mm. I'm really tired from work. I'm laying on the couch. I should, should start cooking dinner. Mm-hmm. My, my blood sugar is in free fall. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just spend just 45 scroll. minutes on TikTok. Yeah. And it's not going to make anything better. Yeah. That's I felt like the big breakthrough for me was in realizing that it wasn't just the smartphone, but it was when I needed something to cope with, like mm. feeling a little sad or a little lazy. You Do you remember what you said to me when I was telling you about my smartphone addiction? No. You said, it sounds like you don't need a new phone. You need a new personality. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, oh, that was mean of me. Well, how, but, did I how, say not, how have that? you been able to do with that? Have you been? I, I've been doing great, you, actually. Yeah, totally new. You can't tell. New me. New me. What? I'm thriving. Why? Yeah. I feel like that has to have had some sort of context. That well, is... I think you were joking, I think. Uh, Good joke. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah. But it, was, it was fair. <laughs> um, no, I noticed that. I'm glad we didn't do our, we were supposed to do our screen time for this week. But I, I relapsed in a big way. Oh, no. Oh, because really? I wasn't, fe- the couple days I wasn't feeling good coming back from New York, oh, yeah. it was like a five hour oh, flight it. and I wasn't feeling good. And it was, I was just scrolling on the phone the entire time because when you feel like shit mm-hmm. or you're trying to cope, you yeah. go right to the phone. So what are your averages? Because I looked up mine before. Well, we... now my average, my average was like uh, two hours and, no, it was, uh, yeah, two oh, hours buddy. and 48 minutes. Yeah. But if you look at the early days of the week, it was uh-huh. like one, 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 and then it was like four, three. Like the, the oh, you were doing like an hour. Okay, I was doing okay. better, and then the last couple so of days, your baseline is really still good. Yeah. Uh, screwed it up a little bit. But this is, are you guys like watching your screen time on the computer as well, and not just, just, yeah, just doing? The no, phone. but that would have yeah. been. Well, just I wanted to ask you about bit. that because you, I watched the video where you um, locked yourself in the bathroom for forty-eight hours <laughs> with no phone, no internet, no TV, no people. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. So two, two, you, hours and, two hours 35. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's Thank on the low you. end. Yeah. 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 You're well um, below average for people our age, I think. Oh, wow. Watching yeah. the video of you in the bathroom for 40 hours gave me extreme anxiety. <laughs> it's like my worst nightmare. Um, because of the proximity to a toilet when you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, the, the toilet's great. I yeah. think that's just convenience. Yeah. To me, that's convenience. Um, no, there was a lot. It was a good place to do it if you're going to do it. But... Um, why did you do it, and uh, and how did you do it, and what did you learn about yourself in the process? Mm. So I locked myself in my bathroom for forty eight hours because I had this idea that I wanted to make like a DIY astronaut um, series where I was like in the most hokey way possible <laughs> was make putting myself through astronaut training, and it led up to me going on one of those um, 
zero gravity flights, which was really fun. Very cool. And it, yeah, and a part of that was uh, isolation training and I'm going to be in my bathroom. It's like a very YouTuber origin story where you're like, oh, this is going to be a good thumbnail and title. Sure. And I think it's still, it's like one of my most watched videos, which I wish it wasn't. Why? Wow, it's uh, a great one. It's a great one. <laughs> Um, yeah. What did I learn about myself that it is not fun? Mm. I would be, I am so not planning on a career in crime because being (laughs) in prison must be fucking awful. Like that is just, and I had a good, like I, I I remember sitting up next to my door and I could, and I didn't end up having this in the video, but I could yell to my Amazon Echo. So I was wow. actually able to like listen to a song on my Amazon Echo, but then she couldn't when she was playing music, I couldn't turn it off. So uh. I'd just be like, Alexa, stop. <laughs> and uh but yeah, she couldn't hear me through the door. But yeah, mostly it's it's just so boring. I um, yeah. I wrote a book which is like going to prison because you were locked <laughs> in a, in a tiny room for months this is why at a I'll time. I'll never write a book. <laughs> yeah, this no. is why I'll never do it. I don't also, recommend it. I feel like it. that's the yeah. most privileged thing I've ever heard you say. It's not, it's not, no, I, I recognize that. Yeah. It's not great. Yeah, no. <laughs> don't worry, we'll top it. And yeah. just... <laughs> but I I the thing that I learned was that I was actually really good at it, which I actually feel like is really dangerous because oh, no. I would, like really could like cope with spending a lot of time like locked in a room by myself, which mm-hmm. I think is why I have to like really make it part of my practice which I did as part of the like breaking up with our phones to like go outside and be Mm -hmm. deliberate about seeing people yeah I think I think what's interesting and I I try to do this whenever I go on a flight is lower the amount of stimuli or stimulus that I need Hmm. and I think that's like if I meditate when the flight or the airplane is taking off Hmm. and kind of don't bring out the heavy hitters which is like playing Candy Crush and listening to podcasts <laughs> at the same time. Like if I kind of like lower the amount of stimulation my brain needs, then I'm happy just listening to a podcast or just yeah. reading a book. But then it's like when you start getting like the reward needs to be so much. That's interesting. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I notice like if mm-hmm. I if I if I if I do that and especially meditation helps with that. It doesn't take a lot to entertain me. Like I can be entertained just looking out the window. Yeah. That is very interesting you mm-hmm. said that because when I'm on flights and I'm not a great flyer anyway, I'm sort of an anxious flyer, uh, not sort of, very anxious <laughs> flyer. But on the way to New York uh, last week, I was working on prepping for Pod Save America and I was like not connected to the internet. I wasn't mm-hmm. on Twitter and I was just working. And I didn't have any problem with the flight. I wasn't that anxious. It was great. Oh, yeah, on the way back yeah. when I wasn't feeling great and I was just like watching the clock go by and Twitter and listening to everything, it was much worse. Mm. It was much worse. When I we, used when to you're fly in that, yeah. all the time for work. And when I lived in London, I would fly between London and New York like every few weeks. So I am responsible for climate change personally. <laughs> <laughs> but, on, your, on your private jet. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, on the Roy family jet, yeah. <laughs> and I actually loved it because you're like – you're not connected to the internet. There's no Wi-Fi. There's, especially if you're going over the ocean, um, you're in this like enclosed space where there's no activities. There's a lot of white noise going on. I would get more work done on a plane than anywhere else I would be. Mm. And I really enjoyed having like an hour of just like sit and contemplate being on the plane. I found it really healthy, actually. How's how's the view from that high horse of yours? <laughs> <laughs> We're down here in the Candy Crush pit. <laughs> just watching the world burn. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just working on his new personality. <laughs> is it is it not good? Is it important to go back to the drawing board? Don't like this one. Okay, I, so. I think if your new personality is like grind mindset, then <laughs> no, I, I think you should revert back to the previous. Listen, version. I've been in LA for four months now, so it's just fucking ruined me, just destroyed my soul. Um, so, Simon, one of your ideas that I love for breaking the smartphone addiction is the hairy phone case. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> It's so uh, disgusting. Yeah. No, I I, uh, added a bunch of hair to my phone case. I've been thinking about like, you know, it's the thing is whenever I run into a problem, I'm like, how can I solve this with product design? It's like the same thing. I I don't like having people over for too long. Like I don't like having people stay at my house because I need my own space. Mm -hmm. And I was like... I can solve this by getting a trailer. And I put a guest <laughs> yeah. trailer, like a separate little oh, guest wow. house in my in my front yard, and it has completely solved the problem. So that's like always I'm like, ooh, I don't like this. How can I solve this with yeah. product design? So I was starting to work on um, like, is there a phone case that would be uncomfortable to hold in my phone? So I just wouldn't 
be unaware that I'm using it. I think that's the problem when you get struck, like stuck in a scroll hole and you kind of forget that you're doing the thing that you don't want to be doing. And another version that I did was I was like, okay, but what if it's a phone case? Because I still want to get all the value that I have out of my phone. I want to get all the information. Uh, but what if it kind of my phone kind of has like bangs? And so there's there's hair partially covering the screen. So like I can still see everything, but I kind of need to like move the hair aside. Like the hair is down off the top of the like. Yeah, and it's just it's more clever. cumbersome. Yeah. Like, are yeah. there ways to introduce friction? And I think mm -hmm. this kind of falls in the category of like those apps that add a little delay before yeah. you open apps that you don't want to use. The I don't know I like how that. you have found that to work for you. Didn't work for me. It's not the, working. The apps. No, I. I think we found that the like physical restrictions, mm -hmm. putting it mm -hmm. in a box, yeah. putting it in another room, those are the best. I actually, yeah. I do think if you're going to do hair on the phone, though, if it was more like <laughs> if it was stubble, that feels that's friction. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to hold. Well, the phone. you showed <laughs> me a picture of it, and it. I mean, it. It looks like real hair. Is it like somebody's hair? It's not. No, it's off of a wig. <laughs> That we got when I built a robot replica of myself for Westworld. Yeah. I have to say it looks like a... <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> it looks like a little gross. I don't know if that's just like me having a weird like of wig Of course hair it's fucking gross. It's got to be the idea, <laughs> okay, right? Yeah. There's not... nothing revolutionary well, about it looking I, gross. I have a, yeah. I have a beautiful wanna, haircut on my phone. I didn't want to offend you if you, like, you thought it was beautiful. No. Um, I, I actually found... I thought one of the most effective things that we did was when we switched to the big clown phone cases. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they like... Like, because it was like huge and cumbersome and ugly, and I really found that that like physically making me aware of holding the phone was was really effective. Yeah, I wonder if it's like if there's a way that you can um, harvest things that you really have a strong dislike for. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I I think the grossest thing in the world to me, one of the grossest things, is chewed chewing gum. Mm. I like even just thinking about it, it's it's so disgusting. And I if I had a phone case that kind of looked like chewed chewing gum, I don't think I would sit with my phone. But also, I don't <laughs> want that. But like, I, I wonder if there's a phone equivalent of like the uh, cigarette packet, mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. <laughs> PSA oh, stuff, like a big sticker on it, or yeah. like you know a, a, something writing off the success, you know, the back of the success of the phone hair case. Uh, <laughs> the runaway staggering. What if, what if around your phone there was a rim of teeth? Oh my And God. it actually created, so like you can't sit and use your thumb on your phone because there's like a little wall of teeth around it. And also if you bring it out in public, people are going to be like, who the fuck did you kill? And why did you put wow. their teeth? And they're like yellowy yeah. and maybe yeah, there's some yeah, yeah. cavities. They're, no, they're stained. no, they're actually like hit up your local dentist and be like, hey, do you have <laughs> like real teeth? Te yeah. Yeah. Wisdom teeth. Oh, wow. Well, Charlie's going to be losing some baby teeth. I'm sticking oh, those yeah. right on the phone. <laughs> that That's is it. They're going right on the phone. So revolting. <laughs> I'm so upset right now. Well, I think we solved it. <laughs> so you had one idea that I really liked of um, making it collective and social by having you and your friends like keep track of how much time you were saving by not using your phone mm -hmm. and then pooling that into an activity. Can you talk about that? Oh, was that an idea? I don't remember that. Oh, but that's okay. a good idea. <laughs> Thanks, past me. <laughs> I think, you know, it, it's like, because I've been thinking about this a lot, and I also was looking through my list of ideas that I have, and one of them was making a phone out of a rock. And I think that was something where I'm like, okay, but if I just want to hold something in my hand, it would actually be more useful for me to sit with a fucking rock, like yeah, an iPhone-shaped yeah, yeah. rock yeah, like than that. my actual phone. Um, but I, I'm thinking about, like, what's the negative reward mm -hmm. and what's the positive reward and it's like the negative yeah it's like or, or can we make three different categories one is like adding friction mm -hmm. that's hair phone case putting it in a box stuff like that then there's a the negative reward which sure. is yeah which is like chew chewing gum or i was also thinking of like is there a way to build up static electricity <laughs> As you're using the phone and that it like just very randomly and mildly zaps you. Yeah. Wow. Because that would get me to stop. I I have that like on a, my like idea a, list. Like yeah. a dog shot collar. Yeah. I was going to say it's like yeah. a BF Skinner, like a Stanford prison experiment, but on yeah. your phone. Yeah. But like, oh. I, I mean, I, I take a lot from dog training in, <laughs> in, in trying to get myself to behave better. But then the other one I was thinking is like, I want like... In in kind of the spirit of the everyday calendar of being like, how can I build positive change and how can I be motivated to do mm. better? Mm. Like what I wish is that there was a gadget on the lock screen where you can say, OK, I only want to use my phone for two hours a day. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you open your phone, it starts counting it down. 
And then mm-hmm. it's going to feel like something I need to save. Like I want to have that yeah. feeling of oh, like, oh, yeah. I can't yeah. waste water because I only have this big of a tank. Right. You know, right. that feeling I'm thinking might be a more efficient one and kind of just being like, like oh, no, 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 I can't, yeah. I can't spend that because I want to be able to do that's this a, later. I like that because yeah. the app now in, that's on the iPhone will just say like, you have five minutes left if you set a time limit. Mm-hmm. But by the time you get to five minutes left, you're like... Oh, well, now I'm fucked. Now it's over. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, like you can't. You just have to blow through the limit at that point. Plus, I like the idea of getting to the end of the day and putting down your phone and knowing that you have, you know, 98 minutes left. On yeah. It and feeling really good about the number being high instead of feeling bad about hitting mm-hmm. the, like, friction thing at the end of the day. And I think that's the – because then it also, like, building a streak of being like, yeah, you've had seven days of not using your phone for more mm-hmm. than an hour or a half. And I think that, like, yeah, getting the feeling of that it's something that I'm saving. Like, those are the – it's the little, little – chocolate pieces in the back of my drawer. So much of smartphone addiction breaking like apps and discourse is all around like the negatives as like taking the phone away from Mm -hmm. you, which you should do. But I do feel like I wish there was a way to frame it as more a positive because I really started to get into it when I thought of it as time that I'm getting back rather than like, oh, I can't be on Twitter. I can't be on Instagram. Because the shaming just doesn't work for me. And I feel like it's so much, so much shaming. And I like, yeah, okay, but how can I instead build a sense of pride and like being like, yay, I did it. Yeah. I do with the idea that you had suggested to me, I guess, in a like drug induced haze or a drunk of some kinds is why you can't remember it. <laughs> yeah. Was that you would you would save up You guys have had some fun time. <laughs> no, gets, I don't think I've ever no. <laughs> Well the idea that Thanks, I really <laughs> Max for framing me like that person. <laughs> the idea that I loved is that you would get to the end of the week and your phone would tell you how many hours you had saved and you had mm-hmm. banked by using your phone less than whatever your goal was Mm -hmm. and then you could take that and your friends who you're doing the challenge with you would pool those hours together be like okay we all saved three hours so we're going to treat ourselves by going out and doing this thing together that we wouldn't normally do or max's case write another chapter of your book (laughs) (laughs) or just take another trans-pacific flight just for kicks just for the fun of it i think that's like i I mean i have i have two other examples that i think play into this one Mm. was where i wanted to start exercising more often and i set a goal for myself i'm like okay how can i have a positive reinforcement at this and i said that if i do this if i exercise more than eight times a month i get to buy a fun little like exercise clothing item or some gear or mm-hmm. something and that kind of became a positive reinforcement on both ends of the spectrum because i was excited about like oh i'm gonna get to buy a scrunchie but then also <laughs> once i had that scrunchie i'm like oh i'm excited to go to the gym and wear my new scrunchie yeah and then the other thing i, I was thinking about was first time i flew with my dog on a flight i have an incredibly barky dog and it's an 11 hour flight to stockholm And I was so nervous about that she was going to bark throughout the entire flight. And what I did was I printed all these little cards with like some cute little text on it that was like, hey, I'm so sorry that you have the unfortunate privilege of sharing a flight with me for my first time. But the way that I framed it, I was like, I'm going to count each bark. And for every bark, I'm going (laughs) to donate a dollar to the ACLU. So if you get woken up in the middle of your sleep by a dog barking, just know that it's for a good cause. That's great. That's I really smart. That. Yeah. So I'm thinking like what's if you How much do the have ACLU those ta- yeah. <laughs> Nothing. She was so good. Oh, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> Take that shame ACLU. on you, ACLU. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you missed out. Uh, but I'm now thinking Trump like, is yeah, <laughs> what could you once you have those phone case <laughs> hours, yeah, if only my dog had a big game so well. So close, yeah. <laughs> Seventy uh, votes in Wisconsin. <laughs> But it's like, Thanks, what scraps. what is something really value, like something that could actually feel like a mm-hmm. reward to use those hours for? And I think like, yes, seeing your friends, great. Mm-hmm. But also, is is there something else where you're like, yeah, you can use that and you get cash? Yeah, I like this. I so, like the positive reinforcement. What are you working on next? I'm working on right now. I'm in the in post for uh, the Jordan shoot. I went to Jordan mm-hmm. and met this toy maker, mm-hmm. uh, Mohammed, who lives in a refugee camp mm-hmm. in, in outside of Amman, and we built a project together. So doing that, and then I have my flamp, the flower flamp. bouquet lamp, yeah. yeah, that I'm finishing, and uh, then I'm gonna go back to Sweden, and then in August we start shooting the Forks show. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah, I'm doing a show about everyday objects. Okay, I'm not doing a show. I have a, I'm, I'm writing a pilot episode for a show that I then want to sell that's about everyday objects and why they look the way that they look. So each episode is just like nerding out hard on an object and why it looks the way that it does, how has manufacturing and development and manufacturing mm. kind of uh, impacted it or different cultural movements. And it's, it's just that's like so product cool. design nerdery. Oh, the secret fun. history of the fork. I love that. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see it. Simone, thank you so much for coming on Offline. Thanks oh, for doing this. This is so fun. Thanks for having me.